Hi Caroline, a quick breathy update. So I'm sort of hopping between the cutting machine and this. I've got my mask on. Um, right, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to get one side of the sculpture on, get the substrate on and get some slate on there. And then uh, we could call this the back if you like, because this would be fairly solid, but I can cut into it later on for additional detail. I'm just looking at glass. It will be different colours coming down, but um, the dials uh, were a bit disappointing in terms of the colours that I wanted. I wanted some bright turquoises and things. Anyway, this is beautiful. It's very thick, ambery gold, and I've got some lovely blue here. And uh, with what I showed you before, I've actually cut out there. So instead of the window ending there, it'll come right up through. So I envisage having some very large chunks in there and then going on down to some more faceted multicoloured pieces for the reflection on the ground. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going where yet but um, there's another window there and another window in there. I love all these accidental shapes so for example this little chip here um, I'm thinking that I wouldn't mind putting a little bit of glass in there through there so far along or right to the other side a little surprise the light comes through um, I whack this um, bit on the end here because I lost this bit I mean obviously it does um, sort of shear off occasionally in these long pieces you know going across the um, uh, what do you call it the grain so I pop this on and I absolutely love it it's slightly irregular it's very chunky it actually takes the whole thing to one two five one two six but I think I'd still get it on a palette I've just measured a palette so I love that but I can refine it later on so long as I get these basic shapes on and and you know they're exciting I'll cut that out so we've got an aperture there for a window and um, I'm even I don't know if I will but I'm even thinking things like I'm looking at the seam here you know sort of stitching galvanized wire through there I don't know yet you know might be nice just round about there a nice tight weave of wire so all sorts of things could happen in, including me tripping over one of the things I'll be doing later on and um, this will end up slightly wider than you see here is imagine the slate face on the other side is I will be plugging up these spaces here and, and I've left an overlap between the slate the substrate and the armature which goes right in there so what I want is to put stack material in there and then to literally cut it and grind it down and that will reveal the texture so there'll be lots of kind of ribbed cross sections probably a few flat areas of pebbles might could put some glass in there so again different things could happen in those side areas but then that will take it that will round the corners that we talk you know we talked about doing that and then take the eye around so so the sculpture continues on around I've just been trimming this end bit up the aperture and um, and what I do when I want to get into an inside cut, if I'm not using the grinding wheel, I'll uh, use the, um, the wet saw. So I've come through here like that. And then what I would have done, and I can't see where it is, I would have just nibbled these edges off and then uh, filed it down. But I've left them. I like them a minute. I'm not sure if they will work, but I've just left them there for now and I can come back to them. I can always cut and trim them off. Um, just looking at glass. So, that's a beautiful colour, but anyway, pop that under there, just having a look at that, and I, I think that's too thin, so I think again, we'll just be looking at um, some chunky um, dull glass. I don't know what colours are going to go where yet, I think I already said that, so it might even have some logic to it, and um, you know, see what you think, you know, do you want to, to work, work it like chakras, going up through and then you end up to the sort of highest aspect there with a with a deeper colour um, or do you want to have kind of like a, a heavenly gold you know something like that they're, they're all just fun ideas to play with that um, that haven't got any te terribly deep meaning but they're, they're stimulating I'm getting to the point where um, I can't explain the process anymore I'm just going into it working quite intuitively all I know is at the moment I just want to break up some of this slate surface 
um, I've sliced a stone in here in half for example so I'm just sort of kind of jigsawing around looking at um, the balance of things imagining what will happen if anything touches the sides and it's going to be ground off and in and around um, you know with the texture sh showing through through whatever's plugged in there like you know cutting into a slice of rock um, there's a bit of old um, glass bottle top there um, the other piece of that rock I shall pop some things in there so I'm just playing at the moment there's a lovely bit of uh, Murano glass here now this comes from from America it's from the um, I forgot what they call it but it's like the slumpings at the bottom of the kiln and an American colleague kindly sent me a bunch of those so I think that works really well there I'll I'll inset it a little bit but also leave it proud um, it's slightly translucent and then um, can look at this aperture again um, so yeah that's what I want to do and then um, plug everything in and then some areas I'll be grinding them flat um, just to just to get some different textures and things going but keeping it unified don't know if you can see that might be able to now. I've decided what's going there. It's a wonderful um, bit of glass that's been worn into an, a ball shape by the sea. I'm going to pop some um, gold smalty behind it. So there will be this magical effect in different light, but very, very subtle. You know, it's that the, the bling on it has got to be really earthy. Anyway, I feel that that's, that's going to go there, but I. I won't put it in till last of all 